as stated by former NTC commander, General William Wallace. It was hot in summer, cold in the winter, and punctuated by high windstorms on occasion. But the National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California was unified by the remoteness of the location, and it made a very tightly knit and supportive community. There was great camaraderie amongst the soldiers who worked hard to train the force. When I came over that great hill, uh, which uh, has a name which we shan't repeat here, um, I had my family with me and they looked out there and said, uh, there's not a whole lot out there. It was um, reasonably austere living. There was clearly no air conditioning on post. We had uh, folks, uh, soldiers living in uh, barracks uh, designed for 40 people uh, with 80 people in them. Uh, this was not pleasant living. They were delighted when they uh, got out on the desert and didn't have to stay in the, in the barracks. The living was tough, but the soldiers understood what it was they were doing and the, what they were doing was important uh, and did it exceptionally well. Uh, at that point, we had no ACS, we had no Red Cross, we had no bank, and there were no fast food places. Uh, Fort Irwin had a commissary, uh, nothing like the one today. It had uh, 3,000 line items. Your average Safeway has 45 to 50,000 line items. Uh, a great number of people, of course, had to commute from Barstow. If your car got off in the sand, it was an accident. It was going to roll. When you were driving between here and Barstow on that Fort Urban Road, the road was a lot narrower than what they are now. They didn't have shoals, shoals on the road. If some of the people could see what this place was like uh, in 1981, they wouldn't believe it. I guess we uh, look at the National Training Center as a, as a great place to train soldiers, which clearly it is. Uh, in my view, uh, it's a national treasure. Cajun 6, Scorpion 7, Tango, over. Scorpion 7, Tango, this is Cajun 6, over. Cajun 6, Scorpion 7, Tango, stand by for the president. Good afternoon to the men of the 3rd Brigade, the uh, 9th Infantry Division, motorized from Fort Lewis, Washington the pilots and the airmen of the Tactical Air Command, and the opposing force and the observer controllers. Uh, your work here at the NTC reflects the state of training throughout the Army. Demanding, tough, and remember that you are, all of you, preparing yourselves for combat, and by doing so, making a direct and lasting contribution to the preservation of peace. Military challenges to democracy persist in every hemisphere. And America must always be prepared to fight for freedom and security. And when I decide we must use military forces to protect American lives and interests, I need to know that you are ready, and you are ready now. Operation Desert Storm, it was brief and costly in its aftermath, turbulent. But from the first smart bombs in the air war through the 100-hour ground war, the blueprint was in place for a high-tech and swift victory. The secret of techno heroes is training men to use them, merging air and ground forces with all the firepower, speed, and near recklessness possible, full time, until the enemy collapses. And here is where that synergistic combat comes together. The National Training Center in California's Mojave Desert. For years, the American soldier complained, if we're training to fight the Soviets, what are we doing out here in the desert? Well, it was really the only place the Pentagon could find to have major tank battles. It turned out to be a blessing in the desert warfare of the Persian Gulf. Until Desert Storm, we had never won a first battle of a war in that fashion. I guess out of the 13 that they came up with, two of them had been, quote, wins, but both of them were very, very bloody wins in battles. The rest of them we lost. This one, our kids won overwhelmingly. I mean, there was no contest. And it wasn't that the Iraqis were so bad, they weren't as good as we thought they'd be. It wasn't that they were so bad. It was that our kids were so damn good. And they were good, um, first of all, in my opinion, because of the National Training Center. The, the morale and the initiative and the inventiveness of, uh, of soldiers to, to provide uh, what is the best training probably that any army has ever had uh, was done by a group of uh, 
absolutely dedicated uh, young soldiers. We wanted to get as close as we could to real combat. You had to have some kind of a hit and kill uh, mechanism that would give you pretty accurate feedback. And that, of course, was the Multiple Integrated Laser Engagement System, so-called MILES. That made a real difference because it wasn't bang, bang, you're dead and some umpire determines who fired and all this and that. That, that was all done with lasers, laser tag, if you will, and it was a great uh, uh, innovation. The second thing was the trained opposing force and the, the first units out there that became the Op 4. The military in uh, 1947, 48 began using aggressors. They had a special uniform they designed. They had a special patch that was a white circle with a green triangle. The uh, Trigon Party was their name. At first it was just regular fatigues with the patch and then later they ended up having actually jackets that looked very Russian, a uh, helmet with a fin on top that looked very French. So that when in training, they were definitely not us. You could see them as strictly someone else and they are the aggressor. When the, the military came back and said, we want to reopen Fort Irwin, 1980s, and we want to become um, the opposing force. Instead of using the term aggressor, it was opposing force or op four. Very Russian in their ranks and insignias and such. And this worked extremely well. The opposing force became terribly proficient. And uh, there weren't very many wins by blue force units. But those people held us all to a higher standard than we'd ever been held to before. I'm attempting to attack to gain ground to our east, your right. In order to hold that ground, prepare a defense in depth. I think in the first Gulf War, we had uh, many comments that said the uh, Iraq army uh, couldn't hold a candle to the Op 4. Uh, the Op 4 gave, uh, gave them a much, a much harder test. Uh, and that, after all, is what, uh, what was the purpose of the National Training Center. Out in the desert, it's changed totally. We employ approximately 200 uh, Iraqis or Arabs. Uh, there are now several villages that have been built. Uh, one of the other key features that we're working very hard on is the, is the importance of having these urban facilities that we have here. Uh, and in fact, a tremendous effort uh, took place early on to get uh, 12 of these villages established out here. So when the soldiers come through, they hear the sounds, they smell the food, they see the people and different villages have different themes and different encounters for them. It's the best training possible. Training at the MTC has always been innovative and adaptive. It take, continues to, in at least my experience, they've always taken a good hard look at what the potential threats were out there. Try to modify the scenarios to meet those threats and importantly try to replicate those threats as best they could on the battlefield. The enduring quality of the MTC is that it, it continues to change with the times and the absolute complete commitment on the part of both the operations group and the Op 4, the 11th ACR, to focus on what their mission is, which is to make sure that no unit in the United States Army goes into a deployment situation where they have not been presented with problems that are very similar to those that they're going to find in combat. search devices and they're going to talk to you about what they are, but it's an area... The people who've been to this fight understand what needs to happen here at the National Training Center to be relevant uh, and to lead change. And uh, I am so encouraged that every time I go out to the field, any one of these training sites, uh, that basically the, the, uh, it, the soldiers come forward and always have ideas. And as long as we have that kind of commitment uh, from these young professionals, then I think change will be alive and well 
and we'll continue to be focused on, on meeting the needs uh, of the force. Uh, in the richest traditions of the NTC, it's all about preparing those units for combat. So many of these young combat veterans uh, understand that they have an opportunity to make a real difference uh, in, in saving soldiers' lives as they go to combat, and we take that responsibility uh, very seriously. I'm going to walk you through here, sir, as a uh, typical IED scenario that any route clearance team in Iraq. Ours is a remarkable country. When people volunteer to serve our country in a time of war, I appreciate those of you who are about to deploy in an important theater in this war against radicals and extremists, this war on terror. After the attacks in September the 11th, I vowed to our country that we wouldn't tire, that we would use whatever it took to protect us. Folks at border were no first hand <coughs> training us. Washington has a responsibility to ensure that you have the resources you need to keep this training going. I'm proud to be your Commander in Chief. May God bless you all. I consider the privilege of commanding the National Training Center to be a, a tremendous and sacred responsibility. However you want to term it, um, this, this great training event has done more to drive our Army to the competence that we enjoy still today. And it's phenomenal. It's one of the, uh, the greatest training uh, bases in the military system of the world, really. Modern, up-to-date. It's uh, the, the facilities are as good as you find anywhere. Yeah, I will tell you that in my career, coming in the Army in 1979, I saw the difference that this place made uh, in our Army. Now, there isn't any place, any place in the world where we can get the kind of training we get in that particular ethic, that sort of mission. Uh, there isn't any place uh, like the MTC in that regard. Clearly a great, uh, great group of soldiers. Uh, and they're the ones that made the National Training Center work.